Hey, welcome to the Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. We are your hosts, Eric Sturgeon. And I'm Russell Sorry. This podcast is about all things Wisconsin, history, music, culture, and beer. Although we don't often use strong language, the content is not intended for young audiences, so listener discretion is advised. If you love the bluegrass music you hear in this intro, please check out Dang It's from Madison, Wisconsin by visiting their website, dang-its.com. Now on to the show. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to a special episode of the Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast, your weekly dose of the Dairy State. Uh, We are your hosts, Eric Sturgeon. And I'm Rosari. And uh, as we mentioned at the top there, today is a very special episode uh, to honor an annual event with origins and roots right here in the state of Wisconsin. We are talking about Earth Day. (laughs) We have incredible interviews, music, and the story behind Gaylord Nelson, former governor of Wisconsin, and how Earth Day began. So uh, without further ado, let's dig into this episode. Earth Day Extravaganza. All right. We are here with Lindsay Stevens, founder and executive director for Rock the Green. Lindsay, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? We're doing awesome. Hey, I can't complain. The rain has stopped for at least uh, the time being. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll, you we'll need know. more. It could, be, it, it could be 80 degrees or it could be snowing tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Just wait, just wait a couple minutes and then we'll see exactly <laughs> yeah. what happens here. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, obviously, with with Rock the Green, uh, Earth Day coming up, and and all this stuff, I, I kind of wanted to just pick your brain and see uh, when did you first envision or dream up uh, Rock the Green or the first thoughts. Gosh, that dates back to well, let's see. I was living in San Francisco, and uh, moved back to Milwaukee in two thousand three. Okay, and I always had this idea in the back of my head because. I had been. I started out in the music industry at a record label and segued into uh, event marketing, and so I was producing massive consumer-facing events for the public for Nike and Red Bull. And wow! Sega and doing concert tours with Ozfest and Blink One Eighty Two, and it, it, it was amazing. Live events are so great; they bring people together. But um, at that point in time, they also were the source of a lot of waste. And yeah. I was head of production and touring, so I was always there at the end of the day to clean, clean up that pile of mess. So from that, I was inspired um, when I moved back to Milwaukee and started raising a family back in my hometown. It's like, how can we do things differently? You know, it can't be rocket science. I, I, I knew production from A to Z. And so from that, I, I had that idea in 2003, but it took until about 2008 to put that whole concept down on paper. And even back then, moving back to Milwaukee, you know, I'm starting to meet with nonprofits and other non- environmental nonprofits, and we are one as well, but corporations and different different folks around the community and sustainability, you know, that term wasn't quite in the vernacular yet. And so it's yeah. su- sustain a who? Sustain a, what are you talking about? <laughs> right. A completely foreign concept. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, it took three years of a lot of meetings and networking to get it off the ground. And we, we hosted our first annual, or not annual, but our first inaugural Rock the Green uh, Sustainability Festival in 2011. And Eric, you were were you there that year or you were there in 2012? My, yeah, my first one was 2012. And that's, that's so cool. Yeah, I absolutely right. enjoyed it. I, I Like I said, I... Uh, from the seeing the pedal power stuff at work, uh, seeing the the water, uh, getting the the little water pack that yeah, the uh, you water guys station. gave out. Yeah, everybody get got a free water bottle and they yeah. entered the gate with their with their ticket and they could go fill up their water bottles at free, you know, yeah. free and fresh water stations because we didn't have any plastic water bottles on site and no plastic of any sort. Yeah, and then also the. Um, recycled t-shirts uh, that were then yeah, or reprinted with yeah. I loved it That's I absolutely so cool. I did bought, you get some of those? I did yeah I certainly did um, <laughs> and you can't beat like we partnered with Goodwill on that yes. and they had all these t-shirts and we made them into our 
merch tees and yeah. ch- you know the charge ten bucks and you know you guys go to shows. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. That's, that's fifty dollars. Fifty dollars is a <laughs> that's is a, deal. a normal price. So ten dollars is a deal for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, and it was giving. You know, it, it went into our mission too of you know living a more eco friendly lifestyle by by giving you know those goodwill tees in other lives. So people dug them. That was a lot absolutely. Of fun. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And then uh, I know, and, and then even just the electronic ticketing. Uh, especially yeah. in 2012 it, that doesn't seem like that long ago but the first iphone i think was you know right around 2011 <laughs> or something or, it's you so know, weird whatever. to think so, how long ago that was 10 yeah. years ago yeah you know it's insane and so the the idea that uh electronic ticketing was was a even at that point of you know a, a first you know that was kind of neat for me so it was yeah and that was a new option for folks back then. Some yeah. embraced it. Some, some not so much. They wanted to print out their heart ticket. It was that. definitely, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, and I know firsthand standing in line, uh, waiting to get in, you know, that was definitely sort of some of the chatter that you heard was like, I don't understand why we got to use this app, you know? And it was just like, <laughs> it's so I don't know, because time. Like, what, what are you going to do with the ticket when you get in there? You're going to crumple it up. It's going to end up on the ground. Like, exactly. Right, right. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, this is one, one time use thing. So exactly. Yeah. And you, you, you got to uh, see Imagine Dragons that year. Yes. That like, like one of their first, you know, uh, experiences traveling. I think the, the country was, was during that whole thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely huge. Um, and and obviously you have a passion for all things music and sustainability. Um, is there a more difficult aspect to coordinating and scheduling all of the things in this event? or uh, When it comes to, you know, it's evolved uh, over the years and we, we try to make it uh, more eco-friendly each year as we go. And we've won... Global Awards is one of the greenest music festivals in the world um, from uh, a global or a greener festival in the UK. And we always try to improve, but given the you know, background, I knew, I understood production. So I was able to look at food and, and transportation. How do you get to the show? And well, let's give an incentive. If you carpool, you can get discounted parking or, wow. you know, lighting. You know, here's a carpool app. Use this to get to the show and ride your bike and you can park it in a free bike valet. And so, you know, you just kind of looked at every aspect of it. It, it. it really isn't that much harder than any other festival. It, it, you know, it doesn't it's not that much more difficult. Right. But you just have to put more thought into it. Exactly. And that sort and, of that sort of, you know, plays to the to the whole thing is that this is this really wouldn't be that much more difficult to plan every event like this uh exactly. if they just if they just spent another you know maybe week total on the whole on the whole planning operation they could probably have it done you exactly know? and you so. know we rock the green we are a nonprofit, and it, our mission statement is it's you know essentially our mission is coming together and showcasing and providing eco education and inspire others to you know enjoy the music but also learn that eco eco education and incorporate that in their own lifestyle yeah exactly. and our mission statement kind of summarizes that with creating a sustainable ecosystem in concert in concert with each other just kind of coming together working together everyone can pitch in a little bit right yeah yeah and and we can have all the music and less waste. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Still have all the fun and and still yeah, not keep, not be completely just overindulgent. So, uh, Lindsay, I got a question for you. Do you have a favorite band that you booked? Uh, and you you don't have to. You, I mean, there's probably a ton, but do you have one that really sticks out to you, or just like a fun band that really just sticks out to you? Oh gosh, over the years, I mean, there's just. I mean, before Rock the Green, you know, I worked with and did so many live events prior to that with Ludacris and Eminem and all sorts of different artists. Nice. Um, cool. But with Rock the Green, and there's lots of stories from that era, yeah, but with, with Rock the Green in particular, there, there are some standouts um, that I didn't know were going to be until, you know, they were on site and, and, and having them, you know, be part of the show... A lot of the artists that came to Rock the Green were 
really blown away by the sustainability efforts. You know, artists on their ride are requests uh, plastic water bottles, sealed water bottles backstage. And we're like, nah, let's see if they'll go for our reusable water bottles and fill them up. And they all, you know, they're backstage and talking about it. They're like, why can't every other yeah. festival or event be like, why is this, why aren't we doing this when we're on tour? Right. And so they, a lot of them, and they would say a lot of artists and musicians from, metric and imagine dragons and everybody would be like oh this is so amazing and they'd shout out to the crowd and everyone was really fired up about it but one for the first inaugural festival in 2011 we wound up having one of those days where it was it was september maybe high 40s with type of a hurricane coming off of Lake Michigan in the <laughs> veterans part <laughs> exactly and we'd been full on stage and but we, we had the fray and the fray was headlining and it was coming to a point where, you know, there were, the weather was pretty rough out there. Yeah. And, and Isaac from the fray, I mean, there was a, there was a point in the day where it was like, is this safe or not? And we made it safe and we were able to actually got very creative and ripped up all the backstage 10 by 10 tents and put them on the main stage to cover up all their gear. Mm hmm. And Isaac from the phrase, like, we're going to stay on. He stayed late and performed more songs when the band actually had to get to the airport. And then he stayed till the last person in the crowd was, was there and he signed every single autograph. And that's amazing. That's that really, is, that yeah. is really cool of him to do that. Isn't that yeah. cool? I had, I had seen the fray uh, back at the, I think it's the Tarble Arena uh, at, uh, Carthage College, and that was back. Oh, yeah. I, I don't remember exactly the year, but uh, sometime 2008, 2009, or something like that, uh, with uh, Mute Math, and they played an absolutely yeah. amazing show. So I absolutely, I, I can imagine the, those guys being um, just wonderful. Band, you know, I never, I never knew a whole lot about them, but after that, I was like, oh my gosh, you're an amazing person. Yeah. And we, I mean, the other, the other fun, uh, some of the fun shows were, uh, Barnes Courtney. He had, yeah. uh, just stage dove actually that summer. I think it was actually at the Summerfest show and broke his leg cause nobody oh caught God, him. Geez. So he, <laughs> oh my so he showed up at Rock the Green. This was in 2017, but he was, he was great. He was in a cast and he, he made the show just <laughs> yeah. so much fun and he was so chill and, laid back and we've always uh supported local music too we've always had a side stage at pedal power stage you men mentioned that's powered yeah. by cyclists and so we've had a ton of local artists over the years with um gosh evan christian and trapper shep yeah i think you guys spoke with and yeah. i'm not a pilot and it just a ton of different bands over the years so we really always want to be about supporting local music yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, I was just going to ask too about, you know, like how is a, a feature act, you know, chosen or, or how do you schedule uh, more of those local bands? Well, so with, you know, when we're booking for the national level bands, we factor in transportation and a footprint. And so we try to route in the main stage bands like the heavy, for instance, they were, I caught them on tour. And so we were able to route them up. So we try to do nice that as much as possible to have less of a of a footprint so we factor that in and then with the local bands we just always we we you know see who's new and who's available and who's in who wants to perform and this past year actually we had a weren't able to do earth day last year due to covid and we wound up creating rock the stream mm -hmm. which yep. was a virtual series and it partnered uh, local musicians and profit. So each week, you could tune into a live stream, and 100% of the donations that came in were split between the nonprofit partner and the musician. Because bands can't tour, and that's their, you know, that's their that's lifeline. Exactly, that's mm -hmm. their livelihood. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And so it, people really loved it. For, you know, we had sister strings. There were pearl uh, pure yep. with pearls for teen girls and it was just so neat to see all this music in milwaukee and wisconsin we're just we're so lucky to have so many talented musicians 
Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, kind of going off what you said, with the current uh, sort of environmental and, and health impacts, um, how, how has uh, Rock the Green adapted? Well, last year, like I said, we did, gosh, 18 or 19, so Rock the Streams, which were virtual. That's awesome. And we actually, yeah, we partnered with the Harley-Davidson Museum. And so we actually did do one in-person socially distanced show with the Whiskey Belt, and they were partnered with the Humane Society. And Love them. Wound up, yeah, that was a terrific show. And we actually we had three more separate concerts that were going to be at Harley it, that we wound up canceling because the show was going to be on October 11th, and Wisconsin was going on the upset upswing with COVID. Yeah. And that was going to be Trapper Shep partnered with Schultz Audubon and De La Buena with the Jazz Gallery. And it just, it, we, we had to cancel, just given timing. And it wasn't, it, it wasn't the safe thing to do. Right. And so, you know, now even with Earth Day coming up, um, we're going to keep that a virtual celebration as well this year. Just yeah. to be safe. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's exactly what I was going to kind of roll into was uh, the 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 2021 celebration of uh, sort of Rock the Green and Earth Day. What uh, what sort of things do we have planned? So we are going to be uh, streaming a show with Trapper Shot and his awesome. band. Yeah, and uh, we are partnered with Milwaukee River Keepers on that show as well and it's it's going to be pretty neat because it's going to be taking place at the barn as we call it we did a couple streams there last year yeah and it's a really special location and means a lot to rock the green too because one of our longtime friends dan aquifer who created our, the pedal power cycling system that we used to, to power the one of our stages um that's his barn, and he actually passed away suddenly, just after Thanksgiving. Oh wow! Yeah, so we're gonna be we're gonna be out there, and we are actually creating a new uh, annual award that we're gonna give out rock every Earth Day, and it's in Dan's memory. That's so cool! What a, what a cool way to just like honor someone's memory, you know, yeah. for just yeah. something so great. His legacy is gonna live on forever. You yeah, know? so right? cool. So it's it's the Dan Aquifer Earth Day Rockstar Award, and it's in his name. And so we're going to honor his his with that on on Earth Day. Shop's going to play a full set, and then uh, we're going to have remarks by Mayor Barrett and awesome. uh, Jennifer Bolger Perseda of Milwaukee Riverkeeper. Yeah. So awesome. that'll be uh, you can stream that in. Uh, so April twenty fourth at seven p.m. Awesome. So well, you can find that on uh, Rock the Greens, what, Facebook and YouTube. You better believe. And I think. Oh, go ahead. No, you better believe we'll be tuning in. Oh, we cannot yep. wait. Oh, good deal. So. <laughs> we'll be. We will be in attendance virtually. <laughs> we, 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 you might have a beer in hand. Yes, yes. definitely and, on my end. Possibly pajamas. Because no possibly one can see pajamas. me. No one can see me. So. <laughs> Sweet mustache. Actually, Sweet you know, mustache. Maybe we should get you two on a bike to power the stage. How about that? I'm in. You let me know. <laughs> I got thighs of you got steel. A, you got a solid 15, 20 <laughs> minutes out of that's me. That's a good idea. <laughs> Hand me a beer. I don't know if I can go much longer. Yeah. <laughs> you can pedal for 60 minutes. Eric, you want to get a motorcycle, right? This I could your, probably do that. You yeah. can hop on a bicycle. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Yeah. So. Awesome. All Thank, right. Thank you so much, yeah, Lindsay. Lindsay. We really appreciate it. We really it. appreciate it and, and, and really... Uh, uh, we really uh, appreciate your time for uh, for this whole thing. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm glad we all connected too. You guys are awesome. Thank you so Thank much, you, Lindsay. And so, thanks for just supporting all of Wisconsin history. And absolutely, it's, it's really neat. Your podcasts are terrific. You know, thank you. When we're gone, at least we'll leave a little bit of a legacy, so someone can research something or a kid in school. Yeah, maybe blank out some of the swear words sometimes. Eric yeah, Ray, but <laughs> get a little. But, bit, yeah. <laughs> we get a little wild, but thank you so much, Lindsay. Oh, you bet. All right. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. All right, you guys too. All, all right, right bye. bye. Take care. Bye. And what a great way to lead into our main story for today. We're talking about Gaylord Nelson. That we are. So Gaylord Anton Nelson was born on June 4th, 1916 in Clear Lake, Wisconsin, the son of Mary Brandt and Anton Nelson, a country doctor of the time. Like many settlers of Wisconsin, he was of Norwegian and Irish descent, which... Well, I, aren't I, we all? Yeah, I am too. So. <laughs> um, 
1939, he received a degree in political science at San Jose State University in California. And in 1942, he received a Bachelor of Law degree at the UW-Madison, Wisconsin Law School. He practiced law all the way up until World War II, in which he served in the United States Army, where he saw action in the, uh, the Okinawa campaign. Yeah. After the war, he had a long political career in Wisconsin, including the state Senate, the actual Senate. He was a governor and was also almost the vice president for Gerald Ford. This is pretty crazy, but he actually that rejected. Nuts, yeah. He did reject the uh, opportunity, and um, but we're not going to get too much into his other life. We're actually going to yeah. dig right into the main story of today, which is Earth Day specifically. I just wanted to give a little background on uh, Gaylord Nelson himself. Yeah. So Governor Els- G- Governor Nelson earned a national reputation in the U.S. as a conservation governor, and I'm going to just do a little side story here. Um, Vince Lombardi has some um, connections with Gaylord Nelson. Yeah. So Vince Lombardi like really enjoyed Gaylord Nelson and uh, he gave him a very good speech about how he was the most conservation po- politician of the time, the number one in the U.S. as he said. And so Governor Nelson used this as his running thing, right? His running campaign right, message. Right. And because Vince Lombardi's wife was a massive conservative at the time, like massive, <laughs> she was upset. So Vince Lombardi was upset with Gaylord Nelson for a short time because of him using that speech. Politics but, can sometimes split the household, you know. Oh, yeah. That's why you don't talk about with Uncle Dave. He just, uh, <laughs> exactly. he'll, he'll rip you a new one into politics. So, <laughs> in which he started uh, many, po- and Gaylord Nelson actually started many popular reforms in Wisconsin to clean up the waterways, protect natural resources, create green jobs, and bolster the state's recreational infrastructure, which is awesome i mean if you've ever been to our national parks we have great parks i mean yeah everyone comes here i mean we know the jean nicolet forest uh apostle islands national yep. you know there's just so many of them to even name and all the state ones on top of that so he yeah. reserved a lot of that land um you know we have a really good park service here they clean up you know it's very clean it's not like some other states you're going to go to you're going to find garbage and stuff because they don't have that staff that can keep up with everything but yeah. we do yeah and, and and honestly we just pride ourselves on on your ability to go and enjoy things in in nature things that literally the earth just provides for us uh, naturally and everything is so beautiful when it's well taken care of and that's really the the driving force here yeah and we're so lucky to to be in our location where the uh, ice age the glacial retreat happened here so we yeah. have like amazing waterfalls devil's lake i mean there's just so many awesome names. natural erosion things that you can actually oh, go yeah. and see uh lake delt and those rock formations just look so beautiful you you pick up a rock at a devil's lake and every other one's gonna have like little fo- fossils in it you know like little trilobites which is and amazing like, yeah it's pretty neat so when he was elected in 1962 he spent seven years success- unsuccessfully to draw attention to the environmental agenda outside of capitol hill many people supported his ideas and agenda however the percentage of people from 1965 to 1970 rose from 17 percent to roughly 53 percent of people who wanted our air and water to be cleaned up that's a huge increase oh yeah And the rising fear of industrialization, smog in major cities, water pollution from runoff in factories, and oil spills brought these large concerns to the masses. He is quoted as saying, If we could tap into the environmental concerns of the general public and infuse student anti-war energy into the environmental cause, we could generate a demonstration that could force the issue onto the national political agenda. Exactly. And that's, you know, think of the time. You know, obviously there's a ton of negative press uh, regarding the war. Uh, and so what he's essentially saying here is if we could just somehow tap in to that, you know, student anti-war energy, the, the, you know, the absolute just kind of like, you know, effort that they're giving, if we could somehow transition that to also like, uh, you know, uh, um, eco and, and, you know, all those other, you know, environmentally environmental things, it could be so much better. And we're talking like right after the summer of love, 1969 too. Exactly. So the yeah. hippie movement, the hippie culture, um, you know, people with free ideas, free thinking starting to happen here. So people are like, Hey, you know, politics don't matter as much as our environment matters because without environment, you can't have well, politics. Right. We, we literally are given this one rock to live on. Right. And if we don't take care of it, we're all going to be, you know, gone, anyway. gone anyway. Right. And the one event that truly rocked a nation was the Santa Barbara oil spill, as well as the Cleveland's Cuyahoga River that was polluted so bad that the water actually burned. Wow. Isn't that intense? I mean, like, people were really scared about this in the smogs and all the cities that were happening, San Francisco and New York. And, 
you know, we're not as bad as some of the other places. Like I've in Korea, for example, like they actually have days where you can't go outside. The smog is so bad. It's like, right. it'll, it'll make you sick. It's not just a general warning saying if you have trouble breathing, don't go outside. Exactly. It's like a, a, you know, decreed thing. Like don't do it. And I mean, this, this time too is before the big industrialization of the eighties, which happened during the reg, uh, the Reagan administration when things yeah. really were starting to boom, you know, on the huge industrial before there was like any regulations and stuff. So this was yeah. like before all that happened and everything too. So in 1969, this sparked a fire across the nation, causing independent organizations and grassroots local movements to start to speak up and demanding change. After being bombarded with messages and praise for his ideas on conservation, he is stated as saying, this is the time for old-fashioned political action. And the first true Earth Day took place on Wednesday, April 22nd, 1970, and was a campus teach-in featuring Nelson, his teach-in staff, along with steering committees, which included scientists, academics, environmentalists, and students. And this decided this decision to leave Earth Day as a grassroots movement proved to be a great way to get the idea across. Nelson, along with roughly 20 million Americans from 10,000 elementary schools, 2,000 colleges, and over 1,000 communities across the U- U.S., became part of the world's first Earth Day. That is amazing. And and you know what? Uh, like uh, like he said, you know the the um, to to sort of keep it grassroots to sort of keep it as like a campus thing to really tap in again to that student energy uh, was an is an absolutely perfect way to have gotten this thing off the ground in such a, uh, a, a massive way. And, and without that decision, we're not celebrating it today. I and these, guarantee this it. is the big population. So this is like the baby boomers. So like after yeah. World War Two, when the huge explosion, so the population is going to be larger, younger children i mean a lot of people were lost in world war ii so a lot of these people came back had a ton of kids like yeah just a ton of kids so. and i and i think it's important to mention that at the time if you chose college over military because remember not everybody was drafted yeah draft was you know only a small portion of the people going to war uh but the individuals that chose college and education they are the ones who are you know I would say pr- primarily the ones that, you know, Governor Nelson is focusing on because yeah. those are the individuals that are are passionate about, you know, things. And if you put something in front of them that makes perfect sense, they're going to be able to latch onto it and then they're going to help carry that movement. I mean, during this time, too, it was like the the Red Scare. It was before the Cold War, but it was like the Red Scare. I mean, a lot of these countries like Russia and all of them are moving back to communism and socialism. Right. And there was a large scare. Um, which is why we were in Korea and Vietnam in the first place. But Governor Nelson opposed this from the beginning. He is one of the few that actually did not agree with anything to do with Vietnam. Yeah. We shouldn't be there, basically. Yeah. And he would always remain modest about this movement as he pushed and was extremely proud of what was accomplished. He stated Earth Day worked because of the spontaneous response at the grassroots level. We had neither the time nor the resource to organize the 20 million demonstrators who participated from thousands of schools and local communities. And that was a remarkable thing about Earth Day. It organized itself. Yeah. I well, mean, like I said, I mean, it, it, it absolutely is a, is a remarkable thing. Uh, like I said, you you kind of present to that group of individuals something that makes sense. You put on uh, in front of them this, you know, totally logical thing and you say, uh, could you get behind that? And then they'll take they'll take over. I mean, it, it, it will be a complete spontaneous combustion of support. Right. And I mean, it, like the reason he was so modest about it, it's just such a you know, we see it all around us. Like, why wouldn't you want to protect it? Kind of yeah. Thing, and, he, and, and Governor Nelson was working with other uh, other politicians in other states uh, around the United States as well. Yeah, there actually weren't very many, you know, senators in the beginning. I think one of the senators from California was on board with him, along with a couple other ones. There were very I think few. someone from Manhattan. Uh, yeah, was, it, it yeah. was it was a very small movement, and you know, politicians at the time didn't feel that was a big concern. Yeah. So, and and like I said, a lot of the things were the space program, and also the um, you know, the Vietnam and the the Red Scare was the big thing. Like, let's go to the moon, but. Screw the earth, right? Oh, yeah. That's, that's what everybody else is kind of on board with. Yeah. And and uh, Governor Nelson was sort of like very forward thinking in, in the idea that if we continue down the path that we're on, creating this much, you know, uh, pollution, we're just going to not even have earth. Right. 
<laughs> it's it's so nuts that like you know like all the funding that got cut from NASA, but like when they were when they were up against the commies or you know the Russians, yeah, they 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 put all this money towards it. So like you need to have something to like do this to like prove yourself because they had Sputnik and you know oh wait we're gonna take Apollo and you know yeah. it just became like a battle just, between just such an amazing forward thinking individual to to yeah exactly focus on here not yes. not out in the universe you know and and great. completely attainable things that you know we should have been thinking about all along but instead you know it's like in like you know even today it's like we want to terraform mars but why can't we heal our planet first before we even yeah. think about doing that if you can terraform we're not we're not so far gone with earth that we need to start right. you know you know it, uh, getting the other planet ready if you can terraform a planet like mars why can't you terraform our earth and get rid of you know the carbon you know it's it's common sense but it's just how it is you know yeah. it's weird but so things like the National Environmental Protection Act, the Endangered Species Act, and parts of the Clean Air and Clean Water Act all had the same impact on Gaylord Nelson's original agenda. Nelson did work with allies to organize Earth Week activities in the three years that followed, with the explicit goal of installing an annual event in schools to promote environmental education. National observation of Earth Day peaked in 1994's 20th anniversary with a focus forging international alliances, a goal carried into 25th and 30th anniversaries. And now an estimated 184 countries hold a formal Earth Day celebration in, two th in, in the year 2000. Was that like was when since, all, yeah. yeah. In 2000, there was 184 countries basically participating in Earth Day, right. all from Gaylord Nelson's original idea. Wow. And it all started right here in our backyard in Wisconsin. And in 1995, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in recognition of his of all of his environmental work from Bill Clinton. Right. Not not just, you know, Earth Day, but all of his uh, ideas and, uh, and and just thoughts and focus on on the environment, which is awesome. Yeah, I, I'm 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 super glad that he, you know, was able to receive such a high high honor. I mean, we're so blessed in Wisconsin because we've had people like Aldo Leopold, you know, Governor Dodge and Governor Nelson who have all done such great things for the environment. And, you know, it, it's it's like as an outdoor person, like and I Mayor, really, Mayor Barrett, I I mean, he's done yeah, amazing I, things as well. I respect nature. I respect the environment. You know, I'm not one of those people that will toss my garbage out the window when you see like those people driving by. I'm not that person. I pick it up. Absolutely. I'm just one of those type of people. So I really appreciate all the I ideology that came out of these people. Absolutely. So Governor Nelson passed away on July 3rd of 2005 of cardiovascular failure, but not without leaving a long-lasting legacy of conservation and love for nature in the state and the, in the world. Actually. In the whole world, yeah. yeah. Today we even have a state park named after him, Gaylord Nelson, the Ga uh, Governor Nelson State Park, which is located in Wanakee, along with the Gaylord Nelson Wilderness in the Apostle Islands Lakeshore. This, th there is all there is always an environmental th there's a sorry there's an environmental study commonly known as Nelson Institute which is part of the UW Madison campus we didn't get into some of the other legacies that you know I'm just going to kind of touch on a little bit um, like I said before he was always outspoken against the Vietnam War um, he's been worried about overpopulation and maintaining stable populations like replenishment of yourself yeah, but yep. don't have more than you need and as well as making a contraceptive bill which you know basically properly label, labeling pharmaceuticals. Yeah. Not not that he was like completely opposed, but like you need to say there are side effects to this. Right, exactly. You know, like now you see it on all medications. Well, it now one, it is. It's forced. You know, It was one of the first side effect disclosures, which yeah. is nuts. I mean, he was one of the ones who founded the disclosures. Right, so next time you're listening to any television uh, uh, ad for some new pharmaceutical product, some new medicine, at the end when they're just speed demoning through the uh, side effects, oh. Effects. Just remember, Governor uh, Nelson had had a lot to do with uh, advocating for that, letting you know that hey, what what are the what are the potential side effects of you know maybe taking some of these drugs? Where your side effects include bleeding eyes, yeah. bleeding ears, death. Yep. It's like what? Exactly. I'm not taking that, but <laughs> no, I know, I'm gonna pass. honestly, it's not as bad as the thing I'm trying to fight anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. So, and I'm going to end with this quote, and I think it's a very powerful one. Um, the economy is a wholly owned subsidiary of the environment, not the other way around. Exactly. And isn't that's exactly what I was stating before. Like, if without the environment, you can't have politics, you can't have people, you can't have animals, you can't have earth, you know, and... That's just how I feel, and I, I'm really a proud supporter of Super, Earth Day. Exactly. I always plant trees. I try to do cleanup, you know. Super thankful for the movement that he made uh, and stood on that soapbox in order to get us to this point. Uh, I think there's a ton of work 
ahead of us in order to continue, um, uh, you know, trailblazing. So, you know, definitely never let up on that. And, and, uh, I just wanted to say that I remember in elementary school back at uh, Tibbetts Elementary in Elkhorn, uh, we one Earth Day went out and, and my house was right across from uh, the, the school. So I would walk to school every single day and there was a small hill. And on top of the hill, we were able to plant some uh, pine trees and uh, some other, you know, uh, trees of, of, you know, different assortment. But uh, and then also there's this little like long grass sort of um, fescue, if you will, uh, kind of in between there. And we also planted a bunch of trees in there. And this was, you know, all back in the this was early 90s. So like they said, kind of all around that 20th uh, anniversary um, of that, uh, of, of Earth Day, of, of him making that push. Yeah, growing up in the 90s, it was, you know, I remember in school, you know, we'd make like little Earth Day crafts and then we'd go and do like a cleanup or plant the trees yeah. or like plant, you know, we'd, we'd learn how vegetables grow. I was just going to say, we would learn exactly, yeah, how to, how to plant You'd put them in a alfalfa napkin, the, or the wet other. napkin yep. and watch them actually sprout and everything, mm-hmm. which was really neat. But yeah, if you know, I'm going to conclude this episode, but uh, if you get a chance, uh, research Gaylord Nelson, um, just an amazing figure all around. He is like a lot of more history. We wanted to focus on Earth Day for Earth Day special, but that's going to conclude our main story. And yeah. now on. Now on to some more interviews. All right, everyone. We are here with the extremely talented Trapper Shep. How are you doing today, Trapper? Uh, well, I don't know about extremely talented, but I am oh. very happy to be on the pod today. Um beautiful weather we're having which is like you know above 40 <laughs> degrees and everyone in wisconsin exactly is taking their shirts off they're in shorts yeah that's, that's the know. old saying on the podcast above 30s take the take off the shirties yeah it's just oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly and hey a little a little break from the rain for a second yeah exactly so trapper uh, tell me a little bit more about how you got kind of started playing music and i guess where you developed that love of uh, playing guitar and singing yeah, well, I was a BMX biker, um, building dirt jumps and uh, half pipes on my family's property 40 minutes southeast of Minneapolis in a little town called Ellsworth, Wisconsin, Nice, which is the uh, cheese curd capital of the world. Mind oh, you. no, well. So, yeah, they squeak and uh, squeak and everything. Like, nice. They actually have those cheese curds at Miller Park and Target Field and uh, all yeah. that. But, um, yeah, I was BMX biker. I herniated my disc in my Ooh. back really bad. So I'm limping along. I'm 15 years old. The outlook is not great. My mom signs me up for guitar lessons, unbeknownst to me. And, um, yeah, I wouldn't say I I took to it right out of the out of the gate but uh yeah i fell in love with the acoustic guitar and then i was sitting in my parents basement and watching a bmx bike video actually and i heard this song in the key of uh it it was like a minor this dark song hurricane in a bmx bike video bob dylan song i I love that song love it who's this man singing with such conviction about this uh such a good boxer. story yeah, yeah. Was wrongly uh convicted of murder and i just thought who's this guy you know the voice isn't perfect but uh resonates with me and then i find out he grew up not too far from where i did and uh, something about that kind of kind of made me fall in love with with music you know that's awesome. I love that story. I mean, I, I I feel like sometimes my life is an A minor. You know what I mean? Like that's just like right. my it's like my it's key of my sad life. Sometimes, and sort of, yeah, it's, you know, it's sad, but it's like powerful. beautiful at the same time. You know, well, I, hope, just, I hope things get better for you. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. It's like it's like it's like the beauty and the sadness type thing. You sure know, it's like <laughs> like, and I just find a lot of that. You know, I feel like nature has a lot of A minor keys. You know, when I walk around, yeah. it's like that's just how I feel. It's, like, it's a very beautiful natural chord. Yeah. And I love I love like blues a lot of blues the A minor scale I love the yeah. A minor scale. It's weird because when I first started talking to you, I was like, "Oh, you're a bit more of a B minor." Actually, a, you think a B minor? minor? You know what? You I was just do, playing. I was yeah. just playing Chris Isaac today before the podcast in oh, B yeah, minor. You were. I was uh, playing in B minor. Fall in love. What is yeah. that song? 
World it, was on fire. Yeah, Wicked, Wicked yeah. Games. Wicked, wicked games. games. Yeah, I was playing yeah. that in B minor before the pod, actually. So. Sick, sick <laughs> albums, sick dude. Yeah. Um, and now, Trapper, I've seen you... I, uh, a few times, uh, a few notable times. I saw you at in Paoli, Wisconsin, at the uh, at the oh, restaurant no there. Um, Maybe you probably covered Wicked Game when, at that show. You may, you might oh, have. I promise you. Had, no one could save me but you. Exactly. I um, love that. Yeah, that's weird, man. Paoli. Um, and uh, I also saw you uh, with. Ha Ha Tonka at Anodyne Coffee in Milwaukee, and you played uh, the Milwaukee Bucks halftime show That's once so that cool. I saw. Holy and, cow. Um, but I guess tell me some of uh, some of your memorable concerts or maybe a favorite that you have that you've played. Yeah, well, I guess with this being a Wisconsin podcast, I'll call out a show we did at the Bay Beach Amusement Park. Nice. Um, on the 40th anniversary of Elvis Presley's passing. Wow. And as I'm sure some of your listeners know, um, the park is home to Elvis Presley's favorite ride, the Zip and Pippet, which he famously rode eight days before he died. He rode it all night from one in the morning till six in the morning. And um, I actually wrote a concept album about Bay Beach Amusement Park. So each song takes you on a different ride at the park. That's yeah. so cool. So, um, yeah, it's pretty absurd. But, um, yeah, so we were able to play the um, album at the park, which is like the most meta That's awesome. sort of thing possible. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that was a, that was definitely a memorable show. I would imagine. Yeah, my, my wife and I actually went to uh, Graceland and, and had visited, uh, uh, you know, Elvis's home and, and uh, got to walk through, you know, the mall that exists across the street now. And uh, <laughs> my dad was a gigantic Elvis fan. So like you said, I think, you know, concept albums sometimes can be tough. But I, I think, you know, as far as uh, I think I, I've heard most of the songs played live now, too, and there's just such a, a, a whimsical feel to everything about it. It feels so fun and inviting. Yeah, I think if you approach it with a degree of like humor and self-awareness, yeah, of, yeah, this is what this is, and it's not meant to be anything, you know. But yeah, I I, uh, I ended up you know being pretty proud of a project that started as a bit of a joke so well i I like it too because it felt like it really did it it came from a um maybe just a little bit of a different place than than some of the other songs too so it's nice Mm -hmm. to see all those different aspects of of someone uh, like yourself so um and and i guess you know in 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 honor of uh, what we're doing all of this for the rock the green and earth day and and all of that uh do you have any any I guess maybe memories or past ways that you've celebrated Earth Day. Well, how could I not call out the Earth Day celebration? I think it was in 2015 where we played on a pedal-powered stage at Estabrook Park. Oh, nice. So, yeah, I I tend to like to go out into the crowd when I perform. Probably not in a post-COVID world, but uh, on that particular day... I went out into the crowd. I think we were playing song freight train and I actually hopped on one of the bikes. So I was uh, quite literally powering the uh, very stage that I was playing on. Yep. So that was, uh, that was pretty memorable. That was pretty strange. That's one memorable picture that I know I've seen, uh, you with the, with the Epiphone, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Casino guitar. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the casino man. Uh absolutely love uh, uh the the choice of instruments that you play as well. Uh well, Russ do you and buy I buy my guitar? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd be interested. I already have I have one Epiphone uh uh semi hollow that uh that I play and Hey, we'll talk for sure. Uh, no, I'm, <laughs> yeah. just, I'm just kidding. Actually I that love guitar, it. that guitar um I was actually going to bring to like a guitar shop on the way home from South by Southwest in like 2014 because I couldn't get the thing to like sound yeah right yep. like in t- the intonation mm-hmm. and then um, we were playing this backyard barbecue and uh, the Wallflowers showed up who we were friends no with no way and, uh, yeah Charlie Sexton 
um, Jeez. came with with Jacob Dylan, Charlie Sexton. Jake. I don't know if you know who he is. Yeah, absolutely. He, like, famously plays with uh, Bob Dylan. Yes. And uh, yeah, he picked up that casino guitar and just made the thing sing. And that was like the moment I thought, all right, it's it's definitely not the guitar. It's good. Fault. Um, it's it's the guitar is <laughs> fine. It's the player. So trust me, every single guitar I've ever owned has always been like I can't really get it to do what I want. But then somebody else picks it up, and it's n- nobody as famous as what you just said. <laughs> Charlie Sexton didn't pick up a guitar of mine, so. Um, that's awesome, though. Yeah, I, I absolutely love uh, uh, seeing you live uh, and listening to your albums. But there's just a, a a thing about seeing you know Trapper Shep live that I think everybody should experience because, again, like you said, you like to get involved with the crowd as well. It's there's really a no barrier at that point. You're going to be jumping on the scoring table uh, halftime at uh, at the uh, uh, playing for the Bucks. I mean, it's just yeah, amazing. Yeah. So you know why I did that. I don't. Because I grew up, I regret to inform you, a Minnesota sports fan. And I okay. always saw I always saw Kevin Garnett do that. And I thought it was kind of funny. Like he'd yeah. jump that up is on cool. the score table <laughs> Absolutely. and grab the chalk and clap his hands. Hall um, of so Famer. Unfortunate unfortunately I didn't have any I couldn't find the chalk during the halftime performance. <laughs> but yeah. 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 Absolutely. Otherwise you would have definitely done it. Yeah. All right. So then uh, uh, we have a little bit of a segment called How Wisconsin Are You? Uh, just a couple of questions smokes, in order to determine, more. you know, how Wisconsin you are, even though you're a Minnesota sports fan. Yeah, I thought you guys would really get upset when I said no, that. It's okay. no, you no, know, no, no. You know, actually, Minnesota is like, we're like basically twin twin states, honestly. Like, we have the, the, the student exchange. Yeah. A lot of the culture is the same. Um, I, yeah. I don't know. It's 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 really similar. Have I, you ever seen a Wisconsin person get upset? <laughs> yeah. This is about the I most have. upset I've been all day. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like, I always think like Wisconsin sports fans have this rivalry with with Minnesota. And it's like Minnesota sports teams are so bad. Like, relax. <laughs> yeah. Like. Yeah. like like just relax like we we are self-aware enough to know that we will not you know we might beat you in one game but we won't make it to the super bowl and win so just relax you know it, yeah. it's, it's, other than that year when Favre, i was just gonna uh, mention yeah for the vikings that was pretty remarkable 2009 but, minnesota vikings you know, i was at I, the game uh brett Favre beat tony romo in the playoffs i loved it I'm glad Aaron Rodgers pulled through because, dude, I had such a love for Brett Favre. I was like, dude, yeah. I might actually like the Vikings. I'm not going to lie. Like, I love Brett Favre. Oh, I you love know, Brett Favre. He's an amazing quarterback. All right. So uh, have you ever participated in jump around at Camp Randall Stadium? Yeah, big no. Big no. Big no on that one. Oh, yeah. I, I I'll be I'll be honest. I haven't either. I I have just because I went yeah. to school there. That's the only reason. That one I, I don't think we get a whole lot of yeses on. So uh, so far you're doing well as a Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah. Terrific. Uh, have you ever operated a snowblower? So as I mentioned, I have a bad back, so I yeah. should probably invest in one of those. But um, no, I. I've ridden alongside my dad who plows snow with um, our family six wheeler. Nice. So that's a, that's about as close as I get. Yeah, we have like a quarter uh, mile long driveway back home. Oh, whoa! It's like, yeah, it's like it's a performance art piece watching my dad plow <laughs> snow in Wisconsin. Yeah, you know, it's that's like, awesome. You yeah. could film it and put it in black and white and then put some good music over it and it would be yeah, something. Yeah, Cohen Brothers. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it's funny because like, our farm doesn't have a big drive, but there's no way I could shovel it. It's long enough where like yeah. the farm drive is just not, you know, your back would be done. You'd, yeah. you'd be out cold. Yeah. All right. A little more unfortunate, but have you ever hit a deer? No, I. that is one thing I've avoided. On good. Road. You know, it, it's it's... That's the one thing like I I've I've done unfortunately, but like literally sometimes I've almost been in accidents because I love animals. Like I'm I gonna lie to you. To oh my god, I slow down. I, I love animals, so like <laughs> I like slam on the yeah. brakes. It's like a danger zone for me. So yeah. I, I have hit a dumpster. 
when oh, I was oh. um like a yeah. wild one. <laughs> yeah, it was trying to cross the street. It is. It's a wild dumpster. <laughs> well, actually, when I was um, in the UK on tour, driving on the wrong side of the road. I, oh. Uh, those I... roads. It's not that like you're on the wrong side of the road. That is um, difficult. It's like the roads are so narrow. It's it's like you're driving and it's like, all right, do I hit this other car? Do I hit the pedestrian <laughs> or do I hit a dumpster? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like it's honestly the roads the, are just so tight. You it's know? it's the it's the it's the easiest of all the evils. You know, you can't really collide with other people, so you might as well just hit this trash <laughs> container. Exactly. <laughs> and now, have you ever been on a brewery tour? And do you have like any sort of a favorite? Yeah. Well, you know, I did really enjoy the Miller Brewing Tour mm -hmm. when they had the uh, when they had Frederick Miller, like the they had like the projected Frederick Miller. What do you oh, call nice. it? The, like, like a holog light? holographic yeah, or the something? Hologram yeah, that's cool. hologram. Uh, that's Frederick it. Miller came down. He made all these like jokes and wisecracks that's about awesome. like in like a German accent and then they i guess they got a lot of complaints because from like people that were german that uh -huh. it wasn't like it was like making fun of them so they removed the hologram oh on my the Mil on the miller tour he, that's hmm. what i heard at least yeah I don't that might be i can see that being a thing though I mean, you know, but, um, we did we did an episode on Frederick Miller. He like acted more French actually than German. Yeah. Remember, we talked about yeah, that. Yeah, maybe so. it was French. I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. But, but yeah, I could see, I could see the you know maybe the the understanding could, of insensitivity to. I mean, I mean, know. the Germanic population is so heavy here, so I can completely understand that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, now, similarly, have you ever closed wall skis? Yeah, so I would say wall skis is one of my favorite um, bars in Milwaukee. And we actually played the 110th anniversary of wall skis. And there was a priest on <laughs> hand who blessed wall skis before we performed our concert. That so, like, is awesome. Me and my band are all sitting up there, like holding our guitars and our amps are going. And then there's this uh, priest like in front of us who's like, blessing wall skis before we play which is one of the strangest sort of you know opening acts we've ever had yeah i mean can you say that you've ever had any other concerts or shows that you've played where a, a priest has blessed anything <laughs> no no that's see that's a memory right there yeah that's strange um all right so have you ever tailgated at uh, a Brewers, Packers, or a Badgers game? Yeah, of course. Um, Brewers and Packers. I've been to some yeah. Packer-Viking games. And you know what? For as much as a Minnesota sports fan I am, going to Lambeau is sort of a religious experience almost. It's yeah. like, it is really a great stadium. The I love the organization, the Packers organization, and yeah, I, I actually was a Packers fan when I was young. And then I, for, you know, again, I regret, regrettably turned to the dark side, you know, and became a Vikings fan. Yeah. And, and but, there's, um, there's definitely nothing wrong with that, honestly. Like, no you know, love lost. As, as, oh, there, there's plenty wrong with that. You know, you know I'm, like I'm no always a Packers fan. And... I'm a Packers fan kind of through and through. But Minnesota Vikings, if the Packers don't make it, I always root for the Vikings, to be honest sure. with you. Wow. I always as long do. as it's not I would, Chicago. I, I would not I, publicize that. Never, no Chicago. Never, never Chicago or Illinois things. But honestly, like that's the second team. I would never go with Detroit Lions, yeah. to be honest with you. No, because no you Lions. you pity the Vikings? No, it's not so much pity. It's, it's just, kind of pity. Okay for you. I I just I think the Vikings are pretty cool. Like I I, th I like I like as a Norwegian in a Finnish heritage. I really enjoy the like just the Vikings in general and the horn yeah. and just it's just really cool traditional type stuff too. So man, I thought this was like a Wisconsin podcast. <laughs> it is. is. You gotta get it is. So it's man. It's a Wisconsin slash we don't like Chicago or Illinois podcast. There you <laughs> go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> we just don't like fibs. So, yeah. <laughs> oh man, we're, we're cut off now. Yeah. They're cutting the pot off. We're so. canceled. All right. <laughs> uh, have you ever milked a cow? Yeah, I feel like on like a school field trip sure. sort of thing. 
um, yeah, I can't claim to be a, you know, milking cows or anything. No. Yeah. I would never claim. I'm I, not a farmer. I've, I've helped, uh, assist, you know, farmer friends do the, the milking, but I, I've never done one by hand. And, uh, yeah. I just, I just grew up in like a bush family. It was like all farmers and, yeah. you know, just the standard Wisconsin dairy farmers, corn croppers, you know, the standard. Yeah. So it's like I, I had a, my hands on quite a few udders. Russ is so. the greasy one. <laughs> I am greasy. I've, I've, Eric I've definitely, is not. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And, you know, honestly, before we let you go, I mean, I, I first want to give you a little bit of a chance to, to plug, you know, what you've got going on. I know that uh, COVID, you know, 2020 was weird. 2021 continues to be a little bit odd uh, for for all different industries, but uh, especially live music and stuff. So go ahead and plug. You know what what do you got going on? Um, we have a new album coming called May Day, which is uh, out in May, and it's a uh, it's after the holiday May Day, which is a uh, you know an old pagan holiday tied to uh, springtime and renewal and the hopes of a good harvest. And uh, so that's, we have the new album May Day coming and uh, we're playing uh, this barn for Earth Day for Rock the Green. So you can tune in on Earth Day and go to rockthegreen.com. Um, I assume that's a website or just Google yeah. or Rock the Green yep. to get more info on that. Yeah, new album May Day coming. And then um, I also just launched this little fun side uh, project called Shep Seeds, which is tied to the album May Day, um, because May Day is so much about agriculture. So I, uh, I'm actually selling these seed packets that have QR codes on the back, where you can um, scan the code and uh, listen to my music on all the different streaming services. But yeah, for the gardeners, you can get tomatoes, squash, sunflower um cucumber and uh, all that kind of stuff so awesome. that's at my website trappershop.com so. awesome awesome i and mean as, as a farmer i think i'm going to be buying some of these like we have tons of seeds like we go yeah. we mostly go to baker creek heirloom yeah but uh, i'm definitely going to grab some of these definitely do it that's awesome. a great idea. Well, thank you. And then also, I think we're going to be, uh, we're going to go right into uh, uh, your song. Uh, did you want to go ahead and just give us a little intro on that instead of hearing us talk about it? Yeah. Which which song are we are we going for? Yeah, I think we're going to play uh, River Called Disaster. And I think later on, we're going to do On Wisconsin. Heck yeah. We have to. Cool. <laughs> so. Yeah. So River Called Disaster, new uh, first single off my album. It's a piano rocker. Uh, it's in the key of G minor, not A minor. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little happier. Off. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it's a it's it's kind of an old blues song about being uh, you know, broken down, uh, in in a you know, using the river as a metaphor, something that like keeps flowing, but you're kind of stuck. Um, I like it. So yeah, and the, the uh, music video features me in a river. I light a piano on fire in a river. <laughs> so check that out. Awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. Well, again, I thank you so much uh, for being a part of this all. And uh, uh, I hope to see you again live in person. So that way we can rock out. We'll be on there that we live. Go. We'll be on that live stream as well. And we can't Absolutely. wait for it. So cool, man. We'll see you all soon. All right. Thank all you so much, Trapper. You. Have a good Sunday. All right. Later. All right, bye. bye.
All right, everyone. We are here with Jennifer, the executive director of Milwaukee Riverkeeper. Uh, hey, Jennifer, how you doing today? We finally got a little bit of sunshine today. Yeah. We did. We did. I'm doing great. And uh, thanks for having me today. It's it's great to talk to you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, with uh, with with all that we have coming up, uh, uh, sort of with uh, um, Earth Day and uh, uh, all the things that generally come with that, uh, we wanted to ask you a few questions uh, to find out exactly what what is Milwaukee Riverkeeper uh, and how exactly did you sort of get involved? Yeah, great questions. Well, Milwaukee Riverkeeper is a nonprofit environmental organization. It's been around since about 1995, so uh, coming up on 26 years. Wow. We we are a science-based advocacy organization, and we work to create swimmable, fishable, drinkable rivers and waters throughout the entire Milwaukee River Basin, which sounds... Um, you know, uh, pretty broad and, and it is, we yeah. do, um, we do a lot of work to protect, restore and advocate for our waterways. Absolutely. Um, which is a, a you know, a really important thing, uh, that, uh, that, that you guys do as well. And, uh, the one thing that we were sort of interested to try to find out is, um, I mean, clearly you'll have some uh, some people that uh, volunteer for this or, or people that actually work for that organization. What is what is it that maybe community members uh, could help to do uh, or or to assist in uh, in, in sort of advocating uh, your your whole uh, your whole existence? Yeah, another great question. Um, we are a uh, small but mighty staff, I would say. We have got a, a, a fantastic team, um, but we really do rely on volunteers in the community. Um, we could not do what we do without the hundreds and thousands of people who help us. Um, yeah. We um, we have a, a water quality monitoring program where community members can actually be scientists and go out into the to the waterways and collect samples and help us um, understand what's going on in the in the rivers we have a um, a, a huge cleanup that we do every year this is our 26th annual uh, where thousands of volunteers literally close to you know 3,500 to 4,000 people come Whoa. out in one in one day yeah. Um, and remove about 100,000 pounds of trash and debris oh from our rivers. Jeez. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's an incredible uh, undertaking. It's really wonderful to think about in that day how many people are contributing their time and, and efforts to help beautify and, and restore our rivers. Um, we have a adopt a river program that goes beyond just the one day if people are determined and really want to help because that that stream of pollution and trash seems to be never ending um you can people can sign up um for that we have a uh we also help people live plastic free lives we know that this trash is never ending so yeah. one way to help is to just stop it at its source and um, we have a plastic free coalition that we run um, and uh, we have lots of ways to get we, we do paddles we do rain barrel workshops we do um, we have a water trail map that's fantastic it shows people how to get on and off the rivers safely and and cool cool trips to take um, we we just we kind of do a lot of different things and there's so many ways people can get involved Awesome. And then, I mean, kind of uh, uh, sort of associated with that is um, if there was somebody that was looking to volunteer, uh, who would they reach out to or, or how would they get involved? Uh, going to our website is the best way. Yeah. Um, that uh, There you can sign up and we have uh, people who will contact you to figure out what's the best fit and, and, and what people are interested in, in doing. Awesome. Jennifer, that's amazing. I was going to ask you too, have you guys found any really neat um, Milwaukee artifacts when cleaning some of the rivers? <laughs> well, we find some interesting things. Yeah, definitely. I bet. A pair of Oakley um, sunglasses. And, <laughs> yeah, exactly. A Pepsi bottle, wow. 
Yeah, we found, um, I mean, we we found bowling balls. We found Whoa. grocery Whoa. carts. We find... Grocery um, carts. Yeah, oh, those are pretty common. That's um, ridiculous. I know. We found a slate chalkboard probably from, you know, the 1950s. Wow. I don't know. Wow. Um, we find, um, you know, we found, uh, one year I think we found a gun. Um, that's never good. <laughs> yeah, the police. Good. No, it's probably involved in a crime. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, and that that goes to the police. Um, yes. You know, we find we find lots of of crazy things. One year, we found a. I think it was a. We determined it was an African mask. Wow. We find um, you know wagons and and all kinds of of crazy things. We usually have a. Um, contest for for the you know for the find of the day or something yeah 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 yeah. yeah. That's, exactly. That's that's very cool. I, I'm glad you guys are doing what you're doing. I mean, I know for me, I've done some magnet fishing and recycled a lot of the the metal and stuff that I find. Yeah. And um, I, I love what you guys are doing. It's it's so great that you know you're trying to keep the city clean, and we we really appreciate everything. And the waterways, yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, well, there's such an incredible part of our history and our city, and our and and we want them to just continue to be part of our future because it's we're so lucky. Um, we have so much water here, and and there's you know especially in this year of COVID, I think so many people have really realized what a what an important uh, you know resource asset. Um, you know, we're all turning to nature. We're turning to the outdoors because we can't really do a whole lot. And um, we really need to maintain and, and restore these special places. Yeah. Hey, we, I mean, we are one of those fresh coasts, you know, that yes. uh, um, it definitely is a, a huge part of our culture, like you said, and uh, and definitely deserves its uh deserves to be i guess part of part of that for the the foreseeable future so anything we can do now is definitely huge right yes absolutely so we have a few questions that we'd like to ask you on on the more fun side of things um in order to determine or to uh, test you on how wisconsin you are holy smokes (laughs) (laughs) now the, the 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 correct answer isn't always yes it's sometimes uh uh, lies in the explanation. So, um, you know, elaborate as much or as little as you want. Whatever. Sure, that sounds good. I feel like I'm I, I'm, I'm pretty Wisconsin. I have to say, I I, uh, I refer to myself as a Wisconsin girl. So hey, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, I'm, I'm kidding. kidding. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, question one: Have you ever participated in the jump around at Camp Randall Stadium? I think i have <laughs> i think i think i know what you're saying there and i like <laughs> yeah, it exactly. uh, yeah there was some there was some stuff in the parking lot yeah. that may have been drank Absolutely. we don't know hey we're not judging i was there right. exactly. <laughs> i think i jumped no, around or i, I uh, swayed and bobbed <laughs> yeah yeah well the reason why i said i think is because you know i haven't been to camp randall lately but when i did go to college um, yeah. that was a new thing. So I, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was still, it was happening then. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The origins of it uh, can actually be heard in one of our episodes uh, that we covered a while oh, ago. I don't, I don't remember what number or, uh, anything, but it was in the nineties when it started around the nineties. It was. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 Well, that gives you a sense for when I went to college. Uh, I'm going to give you a <laughs> check mark. That yeah, works. That one's good. I like the explanation. It's great. Okay. Have you ever operated a snow blower? Holy smokes. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Good. I mean, okay. Just a, just a few weeks ago. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, right. right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Seems like it's always just a few weeks ago. Is, Second uh, winters. How it always feels. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Well, I am a, um, I am a winter person. I, oh, sure. I love the snow. I live for the snow. And um, I, it's my favorite time and season of the year. I love cross country skiing. I love snowshoeing, snowmobiling. You, yeah. you know, I'm good with all of it. I'm not going to complain. Yeah. Well, then y'all live in the same in, in the in the right state, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah. Mean, that's right. That's right. Because we get about six to seven months of it. So. <laughs> that's pretty. Much, yeah, it's true. <laughs> uh, so extra points. Was it an Aaron's snowblower? Holy smokes! No. Okay. It was. Yeah, I, Aaron's. I don't know. 
It Aaron's probably has are, a Briggs on it, though, which is still cool. It's yeah, still, that's also cool. That's yeah, still part of Wisconsin, right? So, Briggs and yeah, Stratton you're Motors. Good. You're you're still doing all right. Right, right. Uh, next question. Have you ever hit a deer? You know, I am feel really lucky. Oh, actually, that's. I was going to say that I haven't, but I actually, now I remember, I did hit a deer. Okay. Um, but it was a a baby it was a baby deer oh geez i know but i didn't hit it i didn't hit it hard and my um i hit it uh coming home from the store and anyway it was in front of a friend's house and i was so upset i was just so upset about it and then uh, a couple days later my um my friend uh uh, sent a little message and said that she saw a little um, fawn that had a little tiny patch of um, hair missing from its back hind quarters, yeah. and which is right where I hit it. And so it made me think <laughs> that maybe I just it. You felt you know, a little bit better at least. It had a small yeah, Toyota it symbol. Survived. It survived because it did run off. It did run <laughs> off after I after I hit it. So, I mean, that's yeah, the thing is like no nobody wants to hit a deer. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we love right. the wildlife here, but it's just yeah. it's right. so thick sometimes, especially up north. It's just like you right. can't. It's it's hard to avoid it. Honestly. All but hunters. Yeah. I mean, they hope yeah. to. Hit it's not one like you're one. wearing blaze orange while you're driving your car. That's you true. Know? Right. So it's yeah, like, I'm not like right. team against deer. You know, yeah, that's yeah. the right. thing. Right. Um, I have right. also I've hit uh, a few, never killed any. So that's I always feel yeah, good same about that. Here. And never... I've never had any uh, like uh, extensive damage to my vehicle either. So that's I feel good. I feel yeah. fortunate. You know, and and lucky. I, like exactly exactly where you were at when uh, when you started was I feel lucky. So yeah, yeah. Uh, have you ever been on a brewery tour and do you have any sort of a favorite uh, brewery or anything that's local? Um, yes, I've been on many different brewery tours sure. in my life. Um, and I, um, I just love a, all the breweries that are, co- that are popping up. Um, yeah. you know, I mean, Lakefront, Good City. Um, I mean, there's so many great breweries, um, coming back uh, you know into uh the milwaukee area which is just so perfect and fitting because you know that's one of the um that's our history that's our tradition that's one of the one of the big things that that made milwaukee great back in the day and and the rivers were such a huge reason for that too they the ice kept the beer cold they used the water to make the beer they used the rivers for transportation i mean things we don't really think about it, I think most people think, oh, water. They needed water, so they, they right. There. But there were actually quite a few other reasons that the rivers really played a role in in commerce and in in our economy and our history. Yeah, all of it definitely ties right back into uh, importance and necessity. So we we definitely not only is it a part of our history because of you know just beer drinking and beer making, but the all of the other things around us definitely played a lot of uh, a lot of factors. So, right, um, right. Have you ever closed wall skis? I have. Yes. Yeah, it's oh, iconic. I have. It's iconic. Right. <laughs> you gotta. Um, yeah. I yeah I that I lived pretty close to wall skis um, at one point in my life, and um, it was easy to just walk over there and. Uh, you know, play some darts or pool and yeah. eat some popcorn, and they had a great jukebox. And um, yes, yeah, so I have closed bull skis. Awesome. Uh, have you ever tailgated at uh, Brewers, Packers, or Badgers games? Of course, yes. Good. Um, huge, huge Packer fan uh, and and Brewers fan. Uh, we've done. I've done both uh, multiple times. Yeah. Uh, the the Brewers. I'm so happy that the Brewers are uh, uh, tailgating is back. And yes, yeah. tailgating is back. Um, so that that feels that feels great to have that that come back around right now. Absolutely, I agree, and it kind of makes things feel, uh, at least for now, a little bit more normal. So yeah, that yeah. is definitely nice. Mm-hmm. And uh, our our final question in the how Wisconsin are you series is, have you ever milked a cow? (laughs) Um, I have not milked a cow. I have been to many dairies. 
uh, sure. small and large. Um, and then, you know, I'd say probably five or six. And uh, But my son has milked a cow and my husband has milked a cow, but I have not... Um, I have not. I've watched. Yeah, <laughs> I've I've fed a baby cow with a bottle. Oh, nice. Hey, hey you that, know what? That we're, works. We're counting it. You got it. Okay. You nailed okay. it. It's that. It's that circle. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you fed right. it. So. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I I honestly I appreciate you taking time uh, out of your schedule uh, and out of your day to uh, speak with us, and uh, uh, we we really hope that you have a great Sunday. And, uh, and, and hopefully we can all celebrate earth day by doing something really, really helpful. Uh, and, and like you do every single day. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. It's really just great to, to catch up with you. And, um, I would really appreciate the opportunity. And if people are interested in joining the cleanup, we, um, are keeping re- it's pre-registration this year because of COVID uh, sure. we, and we have other measures in place. So registration closes on Earth Day, the 22nd. The cleanup is on uh, Saturday, the, the 24th. Yep. And we are so excited um, to, to put this on and, and have people come out and help us with the event. Awesome. Well, thank- I appreciate it, Jennifer. Yeah, thank you for Thanks everything you do. All right. You. Have a okay, good day. All right, bye-bye. Bye. All right, we are here with Eileen Seeger. She is the coordinator for Pedal Power and uh, awesome. and Rock the Green. So, uh, Eileen, how are you doing today? Well, I'm doing great. Sun's out, guns out. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ready to roll. Yeah, and, and hey, we could use a little bit of sun. It's been raining, which mm-hmm. obviously we need rain too, but we really appreciate a little bit of break and see some sunlight. These white arms need some browning. Yes. Let's be honest. So <laughs> let's get the farmer's tan all on. All of us could use a little, yeah, the <laughs> melatonin would be a great idea. Yes, <laughs> yes. exactly. So uh, tell us, I mean, what exactly is pedal power and uh, how, how exactly did you get involved with rock the green? Well, I'm going to answer the second question first. Okay. Um, about, 12 years ago, I was out in northern Ozaki County riding a ride called Ride the Barns, which is exactly what it sounds like. You you start out early morning, and it's a, about a 30-mile trip around northern Ozaki, riding to different barns, trying different foods, and just having a really great time on the bike. And Lindsay was there that day with And uh, that's how we met and then came to find out that she had this brainchild of Rock the Green, which is a sustainable concert. And part of that involved using alternative power sources to power the stage for local acts. So awesome. Everything that you would see, you know, take a take a band like Trapper Shop. And, you know, all the guitars, mics, lighting, that would be powered by an alternative power source, cycling. And if you remember, if you can envision a spin class, that's kind of the first part, the next part of the question. You know, envision a spin class and all of the bikes that you would see in an indoor cycling studio. Now, imagine that all of those bikes are connected to a power source. And all of the wattage that you're putting out in that spin class gets channeled into a generator, which then powers up a stage. That's exactly what happens with Rock the Green. Awesome. And while Lindsay was doing more of the entertainment part of it, she needed somebody who was tapped into the cycling community to find riders who would be willing to do a multi-hour event through Rock the Green concerts. And then also, this also links hands with Earth Day, where it's a smaller scale, but essentially we're powering up one band for an Earth Day event. And so that's how we started our relationship. And then I would then go out into the cycling community, promote it, and say, hey, who wants to see Chapper Shep next Sunday? Because guess what? <laughs> we can power that up. Awesome. And so there's, it's kind of a win-win because you're like, and especially now in COVID times, hey, we're a captive audience because we're the only audience that's going to be there that day. Exactly. And who could pass that up? Yeah, that's so neat. And as an engineer, I, I'm just kind of wondering how they do this. Are these like using like an alternator type system inside the wheel? 
It's magic. It's yeah, magic. Exactly. Okay. And okay. Yeah. Magic. Pen and Teller. <laughs> the involved. reason I say that, yeah, that, <laughs> and you know, I have to, um, yeah, I have to kind of stay within my, um, <laughs> okay. my, my own limits of, you know, the ability. I can tell you that the power comes from our legs, that yeah. then hey. gets generated through the panel and into a generator, right? And Very then cool. that is. That is streamlined to um, a larger unit that's on stage, and then that larger unit acts as if you had an other power source generator, which would then provide the power for everything that you would see on stage. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, I'm with you. It is. I, I'm with you about <laughs> the 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 technical side of it. I I know a few things, but you know what. I like your answer. It, it it literally is powered by the humans that are riding those bikes, mm-hmm. and somehow it gets captured into a box, and then everybody plugs in. <laughs> and, yeah, I was going to ask you, too. So the cyclists, do you guys rotate out, or do these guys just have massive thighs and can just crank <laughs> yeah. it out the sh- entire show? Yes. Um, most of us can can crank it out through the entire show. That's awesome. And I've done Whoa. I've done several of these and then I've also filled in so for, you know, multi hour events with, you know, you've got seven or eight acts going on that stage and not everybody on the day will be able to show up and there might be an empty bike. And I can I can say firsthand I've been you know, I've been on days where I've been on that bike for three or four hours. That's now, incredible. No way. Is, yeah. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. incredible. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's an ultimate endurance cycling event. And, you know, it's great because the beer that flows, you're just, you know, that's in and out right away. No calories are accumulating. When you're I, yeah, right. Like beer. It <laughs> it's, it's instant sober on that bike for sure. I yeah. That's so. right. <laughs> so, um, and then also, you know, if, if we can reference that cycling or that spinning class again, the big difference between being in a spin class where you have the benefit of warm up and you don't necessarily have any resistance on the pedal, the big difference between what we're doing on the bikes, the pedal power bikes, is that it's almost like you're starting going up a hill. And so you can't go hot and heavy into it. And you almost have to be warmed up to start. Yeah. Although it's not entirely required. It's kind of, you know, it's something that don't expect a good 10 or 15 minute warm up before you get into the heavy stuff. And then I would also classify it more as a moderate hill. This isn't, you know, this isn't a steep, you know, 11% grade hill. This is This is kind of just a slow, constant hill that you would almost see like if you were going on a railroad track. And, you know, the railroad track isn't going to go through steep hills, but if you're going through hilly terrain, it's going to be a slow, deliberate process. Yeah. And that's exactly what your legs feel like. And if you try to power it up more, and this has happened before too, let's say the music gets amped up and you're really having a party <laughs> watching the music, you can get a little overzealous on the bike. Yeah, and I bet. My quads will let me know when I'm kind of tapped out. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, okay, sit down, Eileen, sit down. And, so, and can you tell us where we can find more information on pedal power? That is a very, very good question, and I might need to punt that off to Lindsay from Rock okay. the Green yeah. because I'm not sure whether um, the you know the pedal power. It's called Power to the People. I do know that. Okay, but there's. There've been some there've been some changes recently, and I'm not sure how the information is being disseminated anymore. Um, but you know, these are we hope that this this type of endeavor continues as we move forward into the future. We, um, if you kind of scroll through Facebook or you do any sort of European pedal power search, there, there, this does exist out in Europe. And I think in particular in France where they've lit up entire art displays just by people jumping on stationary bikes in a very similar manner. So it's awesome. a cool process. I think that Again, as we look for alternative sources of power in the future, we're going to see a lot more of this. It's it's very neat. It, it honestly reminds me on uh, Netflix. There's a show called Black Mirror. It's like a UK Twilight yeah. Zone, but there's an episode where there's like they to power the city. They have all these people work. That's right. Like, it's so cool. Yeah. That's so, this is actually like a real mm-hmm. thing. It's so neat. And they can gain mm-hmm. yeah, they you know, gain money like and influence. Yeah, and it's stuff, so yeah. neat. That's just so cool to me. Yeah, 
This is yeah, and we've even seen this too. I mean, imagine imagine powering your entertainment in your home. So if you wanted to sit down and watch, and I don't know, say binge watch Goliath all weekend long on a rainy yeah. weekend, instead of just being a puddle on your sofa jump on a bike and watch this and yeah. actually power up your TV. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> That's an amazing thought process, though. I mean, I certainly think it would be uh, helpful for, for a lot of individuals who, who kind of mm-hmm. want to do that. Yeah, and, instead of being mm-hmm. a couch potato, at least you're Lose on a bike weight, and doing yeah. the same thing anyways. You yeah, know? It's like, it's get awesome. fit. So, yeah. That's so cool. That's an amazing thought. I like that. Yeah. But so we got one more question for you. Um, so Dexy's Midnight Runners. Yeah. Do you, do you love the song oh, Come dear. on Eileen or do you hate it? Oh dear. It? Oh dear. You, got, you, gotta... you know what? It is way too early in the morning to answer that question. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's why really? I figured I knew you were going to be like, oh God. Yeah, how many times have I heard you this know, one? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it is true. Um, you know, at least I can check the box today where I've Great. encountered that today. Or, or you know, Eileen is not, um, <clears throat> it's not an, an overly common name. It does, you know, it is out there and it, it, it is always really special to meet you know fellow Eileen's in the community it's like oh, there's another one of us yes yeah <laughs> high five but I can count on all of my fingers and toes three times over again how many times I've introduced myself as Eileen and the next thing out of that <laughs> Dex person's mouth come, come on, on yep. I mean. yep. <laughs> like, yeah you know yep, there you go when, when there you're you when go. you're when you're doing that uh, pedal power and someone's yelling at the side of the stage come on Eileen kick it up a notch yeah. <laughs> it's like oh come that's on right. come on <laughs> that's right I do I will have to admit Whenever that song, I mean, okay, now I now I'm saying my age. Whenever I'm in the grocery store and that song comes on, I do have an extra skip in my step. I'm like, yeah. this is my song. Awesome. <laughs> People look at me like, all right. <laughs> I like it. I like it. But awesome, <laughs> Eileen. Thank you so much for your time today. We really appreciate it. Um, we cannot wait for the Rock to Green event this year. Both of us were huge yeah. in the environmental and like we love what you're doing. So please keep doing it promise you guys take care all right thank you so much enjoy the rest of your sunday all right everyone so we hope that you are enjoying all of the uh individuals that we are interviewing uh during this episode uh but we wanted to go ahead and give you another trapper shep song he will be uh, again doing a live stream on the 24th so april 24th just a couple of days from now four days from now in fact on saturday the 24th uh so make sure to go to a rock the uh but here is another one of his really recent songs the most recent of those songs uh for uh, his album mayday upcoming is yellow moon
so far away from me Survived, arrived, another ride of sea Amidst a sea of emotion, a life led in perpetual motion After many months lost, it's sealing loneliness is part of being free under the yellow So we are here with Eric Schambarger, uh, Director of Invent- uh, Environmental Sustainability for the City of Milwaukee. Uh, how are you doing today, Eric? I'm doing great. It's uh, great to be with you both. Awesome. awesome. I'm glad Thank you're on you. here. Yeah, exactly. Thank you again for your time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, one of the one of the big questions that we had was, uh, um, you know, obviously Earth Day is right around the corner. We're uh, working with Rock the Green on all of this stuff. And uh, we know that, uh, you know, as of 2015, you're the, the director of environmental sustainability for the city uh, of Milwaukee. Uh, what sort of steps have you seen uh, the city take to become more eco friendly? Absolutely. We're take, making great strides on becoming more eco friendly and it's a whole variety of things. I mean, one of the, the fun parts about my job is to think about all aspects of sustainability from climate change to water, to plastics pollution, to uh, adding green space into the city. And so we've uh, been working very hard in all of those areas. Um, one of the things that we were particularly proud of is the last year uh, we passed a green infrastructure plan for the whole city which means we're adding uh, functional green space into our streets, playgrounds, the Milwaukee public schools, parking lots, and really just trying to add the amount of green space that can manage stormwater. So that was really exciting. Won an award from uh, American Planning Association, Wisconsin chapter. We've also got robust efforts in in energy efficiency uh, in city buildings and, and encouraging private homes and businesses to do that as well through our ME2 program. And then on, uh, renewable energy has been a real big push for us as well. And uh, we're just real excited. In the last uh, month, we announced the largest solar energy project ever in Milwaukee's history. And uh, that was a really cool project. Um, one of the things that was really neat about it was that we built it on a landfill. So in addition to getting renewable power, we are uh, recycling the land, so to speak. Awesome. That is amazing. You know, obviously, if we have these things that we have to work around, uh, why not try to use them to our benefit as much as we can? Um, especially the sun, I mean, creating energy is, uh, since it's doing it all the time, if we have a way to try to convert that, that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, know that climate change is a real big deal and, and, you know, we have to get off the fossil fuels and and start moving to renewable energy sources as well as just cutting back on our fossil fuels in general. And so, yeah, uh, renewable energy is one big piece of that. And it's not just a a nice to have, it's, it's really, it's going to be a need to have for our our society going forward and and for the sustainability of the planet. Yeah, no, you're, I cannot agree more. Yeah. You said it. If we want to continue spinning on this rock. Yeah. And there's, we don't have any other real, real options. I mean, this is the (laughs) one we got and we we got it. We got a, a duty to care for, uh, for creation. And, um, and the good news is, is that if, if we do it the right way, we can create jobs. We can, you know, uh, improve our local air quality, uh, and do right by the planet. Yeah, no, those are all great things too. Uh, so what is one of your goals, uh, or, or, or a benchmark in sustainability that you feel, uh, really passionately about for the city of Milwaukee? Well, we have a, a many goals, but one of them that I'm really I think is achievable is trying to get 25% of our renewal or 25% of our power for city buildings from renewable energy sources by 2025. 
And then the, the Common Council uh, and the city have gone beyond that, uh, setting up a, a joint task force on uh, climate and economic equity. And the goal there is to cut community-wide carbon emissions 45% by 2030 and trying to, trying to hit net zero by 2050. And as we wow. do that and make that transition, um, the goal is to try to, you know, open up economic opportunity uh, and address some of Milwaukee's historic racial disparities and try to make sure that the green jobs coming out of this transition um, can help uh, right some of the past wrongs and, and create a more equitable and, and fair society. Yeah, th- those are all super amazing topics to to cover and, and goals to uh, hopefully achieve i mean I, it sounds like you guys have a a really great uh, foundation of of how to how to achieve that and and it sounds like you're all on the right the right path too so that's awesome yeah one of the things that we're doing now is we have this this task force and it's we're really encouraging citizen involvement and the website we have is milwaukee.gov slash climate plan and your listeners can go onto that website and they can actually record themselves There's like a little video interview where they can share their opinions about why climate change matters and, and maybe share some ideas about uh, how the city can address those things. And then we'll take that information along with the working groups that we set up. And uh, we, should, we hope to have a plan, um, at least a framework for a plan done by the end of this year. So people can kind of really see what that means to, to hit those goals and what's going to be required. Awesome. That's great. I know. Hey, one of the things that I always think about is how how is uh, how is my voice being heard, and this is uh, directly answering that question. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we want to hear from from the residents, and and you know, one of the things that I think is exciting is it was the residents themselves who came to the common council and said, you know, we need to get a plan in place, and so this task force that was created is a direct result of citizen engagement. And, uh, you know, we need to work together on this because, uh, you know, fossil fuels are, are kind of embedded in much of our way of life right, as it is. And so switching yeah. to renewables, switching to energy efficiency, it's going to uh, it's going to take some change and it's going to affect um, lots of different elements of society. And so the only way to do that uh, the right way is to do it through a, through a good citizen engagement process and and try to think through uh, how we can do this um, in a smooth way. Totally agree. A, a, a real joint effort is really needed. So uh, that's awesome. I'm, I'm really glad that you uh, uh, gave us a way that our, our listeners can, can reach out and actually be a part of this entire thing. So, and then uh, also, you know, how, how I guess have you in the past, um, you know, no matter how long ago it may have been, I mean, how have you celebrated Earth Day yourself or, or how have you, uh, uh, sort of uh, engaged in uh, some sort of sustainability, maybe even outside of your your job? Well, one of the most fun things I, that I like to do is uh, work with a river keeper and they they have an annual river cleanup process and we get, get my kids involved and, you know, it's kind of a, a family affair to clean up our rivers. Uh, but this year I'm going to be giving some talks. In particular, we're excited to launch our Eco Neighborhood Initiative with Sherman Park. And so we, I was again contacted by residents from, from the community and they said, Hey, you know, we heard some great things are going on at the city. How, how do we make our own neighborhood in Sherman park, uh, becoming more of an eco neighborhood. And so we, we put together a, a package of, um, you know, activities and events, um, everything from tree planting to anti-litter campaigns and really pushing, um, home energy efficiency improvements, things of that nature. So we're excited on this particular Earth Day. We'll be launching that, again, that Sherman Sherman Park Eco Neighborhood Initiative and we look forward to working with other neighborhoods uh, in future years. Awesome. That sounds amazing. I, I, I really I really do. I appreciate all the things that uh, that you have done uh, since uh, sort of, uh, you know, joining and, and, and being uh, appointed by uh, Mayor Barrett as well. But uh, it sounds like you definitely have a a, uh, a long list of things that you uh, hope to achieve. And uh, and we definitely appreciate all the things that you do and all the strides that you take. Yeah, we, we love yeah. that you're following that Wisconsin forward message, Absolutely. you know, on Wisconsin kind of thing. It's it's so cool, and, and we really appreciate everything you do. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, too. I'm glad you mentioned Mayor Bear and the Common Council because they've been, been very, very supportive of, the, of this work. And uh, I, I'm just really pleased to be working for a city leadership that, that understands the importance of this stuff. And, and, you know, you mentioned Wisconsin, too. Um, that Milwaukee just recently uh, joined. Uh, 
formed a new kind of coalition with Madison and Eau Claire and Racine and Green Bay, uh, all local governments in Wisconsin. And we are organizing to basically push for more uh, changes at the state level through what we're calling the Wisconsin Local Government Climate um, Coalition. And uh, so that's, again, it's a great way for local governments to kind of act local, but try to achieve a um, a bigger, uh, realize Wisconsin's historic legacy around uh, caring for the environment on Earth Day. Yeah, I, and it's it's so great, you know. You're you're at that two minutes to midnight mark where, like, you know, we have to do something now before yeah. it's too late. So, and I, I I love that there's people out there that are willing to make this change. Yeah, and pushing for it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. We need all your listeners to do that too. So I appreciate you guys doing this history, and hopefully, we can make a little of the history of this Earth Day. Awesome. Thank you again, Eric. Uh, I, I really hope that you enjoy the rest of your Sunday, and and we really appreciate your time. All right, so we are here with Will Piper, uh, blogger, Rock the Green. Uh, Will, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Thank yeah. you for uh, for coming on. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, I guess, how did you get started uh, with Rock the Green and, and blogging in general? Well, um, great question. I actually am a school teacher by trade. I'm a fifth grade world cultural geography teacher, and um, I just have always had a, a, a passion for writing. I enjoy going to shows and reviewing shows. And I started a blog called MKE Rocks and um, did that for, for a while and, and enjoyed doing that. And Lindsay Stevens, who's the executive director and founder of Rock the Green, um, her daughter Alice and my daughters Hope and Grace are good buddies. And um, I started you know, talking to Lindsay more and she invited me to come on and blog and Um, and help out with the promotion of Rock the Green. And that was, oh my gosh, probably six or seven years ago, and I've been on board ever since. Awesome. Yeah, Uh, Rock the Green is such uh, an awesome uh, event every single year, and it seems to sort of... um, span even more than just you know the earth day week or day that that it happens i'm always kind of wanting more information about the next thing i think my first uh rock the green was 2012 i I missed the whole first one and then came in on that second one and and was completely hooked just absolutely loved everything about it um yeah i mean third eye blind yeah that was like one of my favorite bands growing up in the 90s i mean it was so cool yeah so (laughs) well the thing that I love the most about it is actually like how everything deals with sustainability. And so yeah. I actually, you know, truth be told, missed the first two. I wasn't involved with it at that point, but then got on um, board a little bit when they moved the, the event over to the, um, Oh my gosh, I forgot the, the Reed street yards. Yeah. And, um, what I loved about the event, I think above anything is as a teacher and as somebody who teaches environmental studies, everything was sustainable you had um next to zero waste and like literally like everything like plates were compostable and and the food was managed in a way that that would be compostable and so it just was really a neat event water um uh, i think it was free free cans for kids i think was the the group that was handing out water when you walked in it just was a neat 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 event all all around exactly just completely all encompassing as far as uh, sustainability and uh just uh, earth friendly uh it just amazing stuff all around totally um, hey, couldn't agree more yeah will, will can you tell us a little bit about your blog too uh, mke rocks oh sure um mke rocks i did for a number of years um obviously with music shows um, shutting down it's been a little dormant in 2020 but what i basically use that as is a way to review shows and especially promote local artists so um, bands like trapper shep joseph huber field report buffalo gospel um, dead horses those were kind of awesome. bands that i would be oftentimes reviewing and i got to know some of those artists through the process of that and it's just been kind of a fun experience because we have such a vibrant and creative scene here in Milwaukee, which is incredibly diverse too, in terms of styles of music and and all sorts of um, passionate people doing great things. So it's just that was been a kind of a fun thing to do. And then with Rock the Green, I basically do the same sort of thing. I do interviews with 
bands and um, nonprofit organizations tying things together about sustainability and ways to help the community. And um, last summer during the whole um, Black Lives Matter movement, when that was going on, we had some absolutely amazing, amazing interviews with organizations like Pearls for Teen Girls and Block and um, just really powerful stuff, seeing how people in the community can make a difference and how everyone's interconnected. Yeah, no, and that's absolutely uh, uh, correct. I, I love, I love the the ability to sort of, um, you know, maneuver a little bit as the times change. Like you said, uh, twenty twenty didn't show us much in the way of live music, and when it finally sort of pivoted to uh, being that more live stream and uh, and internet based stuff, you know, a lot had happened already in the world. So it was it was good to pivot. Uh, and, and be flexible and, and also, you know, uh, to shed light on some really, really important things too. So, absolutely. Um, and, uh, I mean, Russ and I are, are, uh, Milwaukee music, Wisconsin music yeah, uh, yeah. fans We've been all over, so. um, and, and just loving, uh, the, the, you know, uh, any, any different thing that we can, uh, you know, take in now and soak in, um, I know there's a, a lot of different bands that are releasing music still. Uh, now is a great time for bands to oh, yeah. have, have recorded and, and produced new material. So um, is there any specific band that you're uh, most listening to right now or anything new that you're listening to? Well, I'm really loving the new stuff that Trapper Shop has put out. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. A new single um, called Yellow Moon. Yellow Moon, yeah. Outstanding. It is. Um, so I actually... Um, I'm looking forward to talking to him um, soon for the Rock the Green podcast um, because I'm interested in, in hearing more about how that was created because that's really beautiful stuff. Um, I'm a big fan of Joseph Huber, yeah, and I know he's been working on a new record that he's hoping to drop later this summer. Um, Dead Horses is a band that I just absolutely love. Um, Sarah Boss has just an incredible voice, and they yeah. were a ton of fun to work with last year when we did Rock the Stream. Um, we actually had them paired with the Milwaukee Water Commons, and I got to learn all about ways that the Milwaukee Water Commons are helping to try to make um, sustainable sustainable natural resources in parts of our city where we don't have as good access to parks and, and things like that. So that was a pretty, pretty powerful interview and um, really enjoyed working with them, and they're a fantastic band. Sister Strings is another band that yes. oh, yeah, yeah. Power. Holy cow. Incredible. Uh, not only do we have incredibly talented musicians, but, you know, what genre is that? I mean, we've got a little it's, bit of classical, a little bit of Americana, a little exactly. bit of Exactly. Yeah. Love that stuff. Such a hybrid thing. And actually, yeah, they they had a really good show on the uh, PBS Music Hour. It was phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was phenomenal. And yet, you know, that's the one thing I really enjoy about this podcast is meeting a lot of these bands. It's, it's really cool to hear, like, from a creative aspect on life in general, you know, exactly. we talk to these people and just making all these friends in Wisconsin is great. Yeah. Oh, totally. The other guy that I think is an absolute hoot that I got to know is Brett Newski. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Newski does, he's got like a little bit more of this like 90s alternative vibe. Yeah. But he um, runs this podcast too, which is just hilarious. Yeah. And he talks about, you know, stories from the road and is interviewing guys like Stephen Page from Bare Naked Ladies, who is one of his favorite singers and inspirations growing Absolutely. up. So, yeah. Um, I've gotten to know him and he's um, actually, he and I will exchange text messages on occasion too. And this is a really nice, funny guy. And um, I like how he's trying to, you know, kind of help the world forward too, with being very open about anxiety issues, which is something that a lot of people are going through right now too. So yeah, um, really good people is what I've learned from, from doing these interviews and from connecting with these musicians and creative types in Milwaukee. And I love the fact that there was just kind of the synergy of wanting to do something more, wanting to do something good, wanting to do something that connects to the city and environmental causes like rock the green, that the brain awareness of sustainability is just a wonderful way to kind of bring that all together. Yeah. And it's something that we can all get behind, you know, uh, Russ and I have talked many times about how we're sort of, we, we have this one rock that we're all going to spin on for a while and we might as well make it, um, sustainable and last as long as it possibly can. And, uh, things we do now affect, you know, so greatly the, the, the future. So, um, now will, we had also heard that you're, uh, 
Uh, a little bit of a beer guy uh, like Russ and I. Um, that's definitely the other half of what this podcast is all about. We like to touch on history and, and those types of items in Wisconsin, but uh, the the beer aspect, uh, you know, we we're both huge huge advocates uh, of uh, of drink local. So uh, one thing that I, I wanted to find out was, I mean, do you have any favorite breweries or or beers or anything from the area? Oh my gosh, um, I have too many. <laughs> is a, is yeah, I understand that. <laughs> Got you there. <laughs> I'll tell you one of the things that a group of my friends and I did during the pandemic, and we're continuing to do, is we kind of started a beer club where we would send somebody out for curbside delivery and just basically try as many different local um, craft breweries as we could. Yeah. Um, and that's gone on now for over a year. And like every month, um, the buddy of mine who organizes it puts together a box. And so we get this like box of local beers. Nice. Um, a box of beers. Box, box of beers is a good box of beers. Yeah. Um, my favorite brewery, I would say, by far, is 1840. Um, oh, man. We had those guys on. Yes. They're great people. Yeah. Absolutely love those guys. Yeah. I mean, Kyle Vetter is doing a, a great job over there. And what I love about that brewery is just how everything is good, but he, like, there's, they're taking some crazy risks with stuff that I would never have thought would be a beer. Like, they have one that's a tastes like a Tootsie Roll pop. Yeah. I'm yep. like, I would never buy this normally in a store. <laughs> if I'm seeing this on the shelf of, you know, Metro Market or, or Sendex, I'm not going to be like, oh, hey, that's what am I go to. But, oh, it's 1840. I'm going to give that a try. And holy cow, was that good. Um, yeah. They really do um, do a great job. I just had their cashmere sweater was my treat of the weekend. Yep. Um, and that was a amazing um double dry hop IPA. I also am digging a lot of the stuff coming out of Central Waters. Um, oh, yeah. We had them on the um, show, too. They're yeah, great, love great them. guys. Yeah, I've got um, – I picked up one of theirs over the weekend called Tropical Face Punch. I mean, here's another example of, of someone just doing something completely crazy. It's a fruited New England-style IPA, and it's, like, absolutely delicious and crisp. And um, So I'm digging that one as well. Yeah, if you get a chance to get up there, you got to talk to a guy named Anello. He's one of the coolest guys well, yeah, you'll ever yeah. meet. He's just a great personality. So, oh, yeah. neat. Yeah, Anello is awesome. Uh, yeah, the, and, and the thing about those New Englands that, because uh, I think we're all sort of inundated now with a lot of the uh, IPAs. The cool thing about those New Englands is that they're not always necessarily the the crushers with the uh, more dehydrated feeling or the really high IBUs. A lot of times they're uh, a little bit more uh, thoughtful on the on the flavors other than just you know the hop oh totally agree and yeah like there's there's you know some beers that i like that are you know big hop crushers on occasion but i also really enjoy the fact that like with those new england's are also oftentimes sessionable too so it's yes. not stuff that's gonna whack you over the head exactly it's not gonna literally get you in trouble the first one you drink <laughs> exactly yeah you're under no. that you're under that seven percent threshold exactly <laughs> yeah, new england's tend to be under six yeah a lot of i times mean even it, it seems like the new crazes the hazy ipas and the hazy pale ales. milkshakes and yeah, hazies, yeah which i actually like them uncleared because i like to get a little bit of that more texture to the beer yeah, yeah. but it's I, I think they're good definitely oh, i like I, I love the hazies too and the um the other style that's it's an odd one that was introduced to kind of in the past i'd say you know two years is the milkshake ipa yep um, I know Eagle Park really does a Eagle Park. phenomenal job on that style. Glad you mentioned them. They are like our hometown brewery because oh, we're awesome. from we're from Muskego, and they uh, oh, they opened up their their big operation then right over there in the business park. And it's uh, if you haven't been to the place, I know you've drank their beers, but if you haven't been to the actual Muskego location, it's absolutely beautiful. I love it. I have not been to the Muskego one. I was at the um, the one the the one downtown yep and, and actually right before the pandemic hit i had a beer down there there was an old-fashioned milkshake ipa oh, yeah which phenomenal. i don't think you get much more scony than an old no fashioned. no that is i totally agreed here yeah no <laughs> amazing IPA. holy smokes I think that was a five out of five on on tap for me i love that one that's like, awesome that's pretty like innovative when you think about what some of these breweries are doing and i definitely have to get down to the muskego um eagle park yeah, facility. 
Yeah, they, that sounds like a lot of fun. I think that's, I mean, that's their major canning operation is done there with all their cans that have amazing artwork. I mean, it just, though, I mean, I haven't actually been personally uh, uh, in touch with those, uh, the, the two guys, the two brothers, but uh, um, that's definitely one of those pairs that I, I hope in the future we have on the show and talk to them a little bit more because we've reviewed a few of their beers. And as you've mentioned, Will, they're absolutely making some cool stuff. So. Oh yeah, I mean, I love how you brought up their artwork too. Like, I just saw one and actually had it um, a couple weeks ago. Billy Ray Citrus. It's like, all right, here's this New England IPA <laughs> with, you know, caricature of Billy Ray Cyrus sitting on an orange. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you know? the beer's totally business up front, party in the back. I was just gonna Attitude. say, yeah. totally. <laughs> you have to do something mullet related there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. And I mean, uh, it's a good sessionable. You know, just like we're talking about, a little bit more flavor, tropical forward. Um, New England style, and it was it was tasty. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, the uh, as far as you know, brewery tours go. I'm sure you've been on a uh, you know at least a half a dozen or a dozen of them around here. Do you have a, a favorite? You know, my favorite brewery tour. This is again kind of classic old school a little bit. Is Lakefront? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Every, I, I love that you one. Can't beat Lakefront. My favorite thing is if I've done it a couple times, but. Uh, if you haven't had or enjoyed the opportunity of having Russ Klish do it himself, uh, I think you're missing out a little bit, but it is still the most top notch uh, brewery tour I've ever been on. And uh, it take nothing away from whoever the guide is because they hire yeah. the best guides who are all very passionate like about the company. Too, they're just uh, awesome. Funny. They're professional. <laughs> it's all good. So yeah, yeah, you're, you're not wrong on that. Yeah, I mean, you go to the. I remember the days before, you know, my wife and I had kids, and we'd get together with other couples and, and go down there during Lent for, you know, a brewery tour and a fish fry, and just have a have a great time with the polka band that's got the little bubble machine going on the stage and all that good stuff. It's a great yeah. place, and they have the the original Bernie Chalet. Yes. Too. Which is pretty pretty awesome in my book. I'm a huge Brewer fan, so same here. Yeah, same here. Yeah, and and yeah, and, and to your point, I think you have to walk through the the Bernie Chalet in order to even start the tour. I think that's the start Correct. of the whole thing. You get to see how many people have written in it and everything. I I was lucky enough to go before they close off the slide, so I got to go down there. That's awesome. But I think Bernie has the best job, dude. Just drink beer and yeah. go down a slide when they hit a home run. That's like the best. And did job. did you guys oh, totally. did you guys see that uh, they painted? the new Bernie uh, stuff at uh, American Family Field that like very similar to the uh, the, the old uh, chalet. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, totally. Paying that's homage cool. to it. So that's pretty awesome. We were there for opening day, um, my wife and my son and my dad and I, and we saw that, and that was pretty cool. We didn't get to see any home runs, though, so no one – we didn't get to see Bernie <laughs> go down the, the slide yet. Yeah. But I'm sure that day will come hopefully at our next Brewer game. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully, Bernie was slugging some beers in the dugout, though. So yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, lastly, before we let you go, Will, we just had sure a thing. quick question for you about uh, something. We're we're both uh, pretty big WWF fans. Uh, before <laughs> before the WWE thing came out, are you? Is there any relation uh, to Rowdy Roddy Piper? Oh my gosh, this this <laughs> makes me laugh. No, I, I'm also a big WWF guy. Um, and love watching like the old school wrestling, yeah, same here. wrestling stuff, like the old Saturday nights main events and and that sort of stuff. And my son, who's seven, is kind of getting into it too. Awesome. Um, there is no relation between me and the Hot Rod, uh, <laughs> the hot rod <laughs> Piper. But when I was my son's age and I started a new school, I remember telling wrestling was really big. This was like 1986. I remember telling kids that Rowdy Rowdy Piper is my uncle. Think like, all right, this is gonna give me some cred. That's so awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. You just gotta ask my parents if I could get a kilt. And my parents oh yeah, like, I was just gonna ask no. if you had a kilt. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> oh man, that is awesome. I did have a a, a Rowdy Rowdy Piper T-shirt in my first ever wrestling match that my dad took me to was at the old Mecca Auditorium. It was probably in 1986. Nice. And the main event was Rowdy Rowdy Piper versus the adorable Adrian Adonis. Ooh, oh, the nice. adorable. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, he came out with the flowers and the pink cape. Looking and, cute. They're looking all cute with Jimmy Hart. And then yeah. Hot Rod came out and... Who didn't Jimmy Hart manage? I mean... Awesome. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Well, hey, you know what? This has been fantastic. Um, Thank you. We re- we really look forward to uh, uh, meeting you in the future and actually going to a couple of live events and running India and stuff too. So, uh, and and Absolutely. sharing a beer with you as well. So, um, thank you for taking time out today, and uh, we hope you have a, a great Sunday. Hey, you as well. Thanks so much, and would love to have a love to clink a glass together with you guys as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much again, Will. Thank you. You betcha. All Take right. care. Bye. All right. Honestly, we appreciate everyone taking a listen and taking some time out of your days to listen to this awesome extravaganza that we have put together for Earth Day uh, with Rock the Green, of course. And uh, we wanted to leave you with one additional song by Trapper Shep. This one is uh, on Wisconsin, and it is actually featuring uh, a few uh, unpublished verses by the great Bob Dylan. So uh, absolutely go out and research this song and research this tune. Go and listen. See the music video, which is absolutely awesome and features a bunch of Wisconsin people. This is On Wisconsin, Trapper Chef. Wisconsin is the dairy state, guess you all know it well. I was in Wauwatosa, the truth I will tell. It's a milk and cheese and cream, yes I've known it all my days. And I'm going back to my hometown, I'm leaving right away. I'm headed to Wisconsin, 2,000 miles to go. Madison, Milwaukee, sets my heart ain't glow. I'm a coming to that state and my heart's beating fast. And I'll jerk my banjo gently, twiddle my mustache on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin, calling me that way. Are driving me insane to drink my home's in wisconsin it's a better place i think i have been in california and i've been all around but my home's in wisconsin and i'm gonna own this town on wisconsin on wisconsin All right, that concludes this episode of Wisconsin Drunken History Podcast. If you enjoyed this vulgar display of Wisconsin, 
please like and subscribe on whatever streaming platform you prefer. And remember to hit the bell on YouTube to be notified when we release new content. Also, if you have any suggestions or ideas for future episodes, please send us an email at widrunkenhistory at gmail.com or head over to our Facebook and Instagram pages. Thanks again for listening, and remember as always, watch out for deer on your way home. <laughs>